afternoon, Good Shepherd. It's Wednesday, March 16th, um, and we are looking for more weather this evening. Um, it's March. Um, anyway, glad to see you that made it past the Ides of March. Uh, no Brutus coming after you, I trust. Um, a lot of stuff to announce today, and uh, it's, it's uh, all good, and uh, happy to be able to share with you a little bit. Um, first of all, uh, some information that uh, about um, worship changes, not significant, but um, uh, pleasing, I think, um, based on um, how some of the, um, the COVID stuff is beginning to relax and things like that. So uh, some of them will be um, happening more uh, soon than others. Um, but we, we are going to start um, passing the offering plates again. That's not because we have any financial concerns, but because it, uh, it's an easier way for us to uh, track things. And uh, I know that a lot of people said, when are we going to start doing this again? So we're going to start doing this again um, this Sunday. Similarly, um, we'll be having holy water back in the little, uh, the little container there back at the back of the main sanctuary. Again, um, starting this Sunday, we are um, past some of the um, significant concerns about both passing the plates and the holy water um, coming up. Uh, a little further down the line, and I'll have a bit more to say about this in a minute, but um, of course we've asked, been asked a lot about when are we going to be able to um, have the, the cup, the, the wine again. And um, we've been given some, um, some guidelines from the office of the bishop as to how to move forward in that direction. And uh, we'll start uh, with intinction. Um, again, that's the, the putting of the wafer in, in the cup. Um, we're going to, it's not happening this Sunday. <laughs> we're going to work out all the logistics of that. We need to obviously to have more people up front uh, than we have scheduled currently. Um, and I'm thinking um, that we will begin that process, begin that practice again of the intinction as we move forward to the common cup. We'll begin that on Monday, Thursday which is the Thursday prior to Easter. And on Monday Thursday, we celebrate the institution um, of the Eucharist, the Last Supper. It's the last uh, the celebration of the Last Supper. And it seemed to me to be an appropriate time to bring that back. Um, and so we will continue to move um, as we can towards uh, having the common cup. The fact that it's available doesn't mean that everybody will want to take advantage of it. Similarly, the fact that intention is available doesn't mean that everybody will want to take advantage of it, but we're happy to be able to move forward um, or to move closer to some kind of um, uh, common practice of bread and wine uh, together at the same, you know, in the same service. So good things, looking forward. Um, I mentioned Monday Thursday. I want to say a few words about Holy Week. Um, I know that there have been some um, communication coming out in the e-news, and this will continue tomorrow. Um, Holy Week will start uh, on the 10th of, uh, of April um, with Monday Thursday, or no, Palm Sunday, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Palm Sunday, the services will be at 7.45 and 10.30. Um, in looking at past attendance, uh, we will have both services, both the 7.45 service and the 10.30 service in the main sanctuary. Um, we are going to uh, contract with somebody to be able to live stream the 745 service. So if you're accustomed to uh, tuning in uh, on your computer to the 745 service, um, you will be able to do that still on, um, on Palm Sunday. We will not be doing a Zoom. It will just be a YouTube Live. We'll give you good, good instructions on how to connect with that. But um, as Holy Week, is that significant time, Palm Sunday and Easter being uh, so uh, central to those services um, that we want to make sure that there's opportunity for folks who aren't able to be with us in person to, to do that. So we are bringing in an independent videographer who will um, live stream the 745 service. Likewise, the Easter, uh, Easter Sunday, uh, we will be shifting to two services, but 9 and 11. Um, there, there will be a Saturday evening service. I'll get back to that in a minute. But on Sunday morning, on Easter Sunday, there will be two services, 9 and 11. Uh, we know that we have a lot of folks coming 
um, on that Sunday, um, but we are still strapped a little bit by the number of volunteers that we have um, in terms of music and reading and all of the other kinds of things that uh, it made most sense to only have two services, nine and 11. The nine o'clock service will be uh, live streamed. Um, so we will be using the same videographer that we will have used for Palm Sunday to live stream the nine o'clock Sunday, Easter Sunday service. So you'll see more about that as we go, uh, as we get a little closer. Um, Maundy Thursday, as I mentioned, uh, not only will we uh, celebrate the institution of the Lord's Supper by the inclusion of, of intention, uh, but we will have our own uh, soup supper as we have done in the past. Um, and uh, so that will be great. It will be start at 5.30 and then we will move right into traditional Maundy Thursday service with washing of feet and the stripping of the altar. And then the, uh, the vigil at the altar of repose. Um, we will resume that and this year, uh, we will have a hybrid option. We will make sure that if people want to come in and physically pray before the altar of repose in the chapel, that there is a way for them to get into the building. Um, if people don't want to come into the building and would like to pray um, via Zoom, we will make sure that that is possible too. So it will be a hybrid um, altar of repose. So lots of stuff there. Um, and then the last thing is that the Easter Vigil, um, we're planning some surprises, and I can't reveal them yet, um, but we're some, planning some surprises for the Easter Vigil. This will be on Saturday night before Easter Sunday, obviously. So this will be Saturday night, the 16th, and um, we'll start at 7.30, or is it 8? Uh, you'll see the notice. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> um, but it's the lighting of the new fire. Uh, we may have some baptisms. Um, and it will be the, the first uh, real Sunday um, of, of the Easter tide. Again, there may be some things before that. There may be some things after that. Just stay tuned. Um, but it'll be a great Easter celebration, the first one in three years. Uh, as I've thought back on my time at Good Shepherd, I've only had one live Holy Week. <laughs> I am so looking forward to this next one. In the meantime, we are still in Lent. And uh, I want to remind you, if you haven't uh, taken part in the Lenten Faith Forum on Sunday morning, um, you're welcome to do so. You can, uh, the, the link will come out tomorrow, but you can go back and watch the last two discussions. If you have the book, um, we still have some books available if you'd like to join in. Uh, please let me know. We meet at 9.15 um, on Sunday mornings between the two services. And um, if you're able to follow it through on a Zoom link as well. So please, if you're interested in that, uh, let us know. Likewise, the, the Wednesday uh, soup supper um, and Lenten program on called, for trans, called to Transformation will continue this evening. And that starts at six o'clock. If you can quickly let us know if you haven't already that you're going to come, that will help a little bit with uh, soup preparation. Um, but uh, if you missed last week, that's OK. There were a number of people who did both because they were engaged in another meeting uh, that, that conflicted or it was weather related. And I'm hoping that we'll get this tonight. The weather won't come in before we have all been able to go home safely. Uh, this coming Sunday is the third Sunday. And so we will have our uh, monthly 4 p.m. Eucharist in the chapel. Uh, this will have a Lenten theme. Um, and it's a Lent, a time for turning is, is the theme. And there will be a little bit more information in the e-news tomorrow. Um, with the relaxation of a lot of the COVID restrictions, uh, we will continue uh, the practice that we began um, last fall, but what we sort of had interrupted of having the, the Eucharist followed by a simple meal. So if you come at four o'clock, um, we'll be done about five and then we'll have a meal together. Um, and so look forward to seeing you there. You can come in the morning and come in the afternoon or just come in the afternoon. It's, it's all right for all of us. And, um, more stuff. Uh, like I said, there's a lot, and, and, a, and a lot of it's really, really good. Um, we have, I've hired a new contemporary music director who will also direct the Black Sheep. Um, we're very excited that Paul Falk uh, will join us uh, starting on Sunday. Um, he is a music teacher, a vocal music teacher at Ponderosa High School, so he's got a lot of good experience. And uh, some of our parishioners have had experience with him. Um, and uh, everybody's very excited uh, to have him join us. And it will be a lot of fun. He'll be here to help us through Easter 
And so it's, it's going to be a joyous, joyous, joyous uh, time. Uh, so look forward to meeting him. Um, we are, uh, as many of you know, looking for a new business administrator. Um, Charlotte has had to um, step back from that role because of health. And we are looking for a new business administrator. There is a link um, on our homepage um, to, if you're interested or if you know of somebody who is interested, um, please let us know and, and, and refer them to the homepage where they can find out more information. And we are also still looking to uh, hire a new nursery care um, person. So if you know of somebody or if you're interested in helping take care of our smallest parishioners, uh, let me know and I can make sure that you have a job description in hand and we can move further on that front. Whew. Not done. Um, on Saturday, uh, April 9, there is going to be a workshop held at St. Gabriel's Episcopal Church just up the street, an all-day workshop on evangelism. And there will be more information coming out in the e-news about that. Um, but it's an all-day workshop. Um, presenters will be local, um, including Mike Orr uh, uh, from the Office of the Bishop, uh, as well as some more national presenters. And it will be a good way to sort of re-envision evangelism um, as we move out of COVID and really want to have people uh, join us in, in our Christian walk. And so I encourage you to take a look at the information that comes out. Um, if you want to know more, I think Jim Wolf can tell you a little bit more. He's been on some of the planning team of that. Um, and there certainly will be more available uh, information referenced in the e-news. Um, I mentioned before uh, last week that we're looking for some help to get that TV in the hallway uh, connected to some computer so we can use it to display some of this information. Um, so if, you're, if you've got skills in that, that would be great. Um, it doesn't take a lot, but it takes more than I have right now. <laughs> And um, also, um, I've been contacted um, and have had some communication with a gentleman who uh, found us on, on uh, the internet. Uh, he goes to the Church of the Good Shepherd in Cuba, uh, in a little town outside of Havana. And it appears, uh, given the communications that we've had, that he would like to uh, know more about what we're doing and have somebody uh, sort of stateside to communicate with him. So if you have interest in, in sort of being a Facebook pen pal um, with, a, with a guy named uh, Israel Castro, uh, please let me know and, and I can make that connection. He sounds like a wonderful guy. He sent some really charming pictures of this congregation um, outside of Havana. And, um, and he's really eager, I think, to, to have some really great uh, connections with us. And uh, he thought that it was wonderful that Good Shepherd in, in Cuba could connect with Good Shepherd in Centennial. So if you're interested in that, um, please let me know. And then lastly, and I'll let you go, uh, I'll, well, almost lastly, I remind you that Compline uh, tonight at 845, um, you're welcome to join and the links for that will go out both on Facebook and as an email um, later today. I'd like to close with um, a, a uh, a psalm, it's not in the, in the book of Psalms um, in the Bible, but a, a, a more contemporary psalm for Lent. And I'll just conclude, conclude with this. We thank you, O God, for the warming of the winds that brings a melting of the snow for daylight hours that daily grow longer and richer in the aroma of hope. Spring lingers beneath the horizon as approaching echoes of Easter ring in our ears. We lift up our hearts to you, beloved, in this season of Lent, that gently sweeps across our sluggish and sleeping hearts, awakening us to a deeper love for you. May the wind of the spirit that drove Jesus into the desert, into the furnace of prayer, also drive us with a passion during this Lenten season to enkindle the fire of our devotion in the desert of Lenten love. Birds above on migratory wings single us to an inner migration, a message that draws us homeward bound on spirit's wings to the heart of our beloved. May we earnestly use this Lenten season to answer the inner urge 
to return. Amen. Blessings. And I look forward to seeing you soon.